Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I've got a real challenge for you today. Um, let's take a look at this sucker and see what's going on. Annette and Paolo are planning on building a tiled trapezoidal patio area as shown in their backyard. The patio will feature a jacuzzi, five meters in diameter, in one corner. How many square meters of patio will need to be tiled, not counting the space for the jacuzzi? So this... Uh, is a challenging problem. I mean, I think it's a little obvious that it's a, a, some kind of geometry based on what's going on here, but what kind of geometry? Let's take a look at some context clues from this problem. We see uh, this language, how many square meters? Did you take note of that? Anytime you see square units, I don't care what the units are, meters, inches, yards, feet. If they're square meters, this is talking about the concept of area. Now, there's a couple kinds of area. We see regular plain old area, like on 2D shapes, or um, we see surface area covering 3D shapes, uh, but either way, uh, we're looking at an area problem when we see square meters. Now, we're talking about how many square meters of patio will need to be tiled. Okay, so where am I tiling? I'm tiling this whole trapezoidal space. Not counting uh, the jacuzzi, that little hole. Uh, there'll be a little hole in my tiling for the jacuzzi to fit down in. So uh, thinking about this, this is what we call a composite shape. So this is an area of a composite shape problem. And what do I mean by a composite shape? Uh, sometimes teachers call this a complex shape or a compound shape, uh, but what I mean is that it's more than one shape put together. In this case, what are our shapes? Well, we have a trapezoid with a circle cut out of it. Now, you might say, well, what in the world am I supposed to do? You're literally going to take the area of the trapezoid because we can find that whole area, including the circle, this whole shape, and then you're going to cut out, you're going to remove, mathematically how to re remove something, we do it through subtraction, we're going to remove that little circle shape, the area of the circle. And you're like, it's that easy? It's that easy. You can actually, with composite shapes, look at the individual shapes that it's composed of and either add them together if they're put together, or subtract one out if it's a cutout. So that's... Um, what we are going to do here. So let's take a look. Um, for the area of the trapezoid formula, super good news. You don't have to have that memorized. That is on your GED formula sheet. If you take a look, uh, that formula says A equals one half of the height times the quantity of the two bases added together. B1 plus B2 just means first base and second base. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the area of that trapezoid. Okay, so um, I'm kind of lazy. Um, I don't like to type fractions into my calculator, so I think I'll call one half 0.5. Would you still be right if you didn't call it 0.5? Yes, you just have to know how to deal with the fraction. Now, the height of my trapezoid. So it's important to know on a trapezoid, let me grab a different color so you can see what I mean here, that the two bases are the two parallel sides. So there are my two bases, and the height uh, goes straight from base to base at a right angle. So there's the height of my trapezoid. Now this height isn't marked. You might be saying, what is it? But notice that this trapezoid has a, um, a flat side here, a 90 degree angle side. It's like it's composed of a, a rectangle in here. So if this guy's 10, this guy is also 10. So my height is 10. Now I need to times that by the sum of my two bases, my two bases added together. What are my two bases? Well, this piece here is 10 uh, feet, oh, meters long, 10 meters long. How do I know? Again, I'm looking at the opposite side of this little rectangle inside the trapezoid, so that's 10. And then this length is 10 and 10 for a total of 20. So my base is, my first base is 10, my second base is 20, I'll sum those. Okay, now I can actually type this entire expression into my TI-30XS if I wanted to. And notice that the right-hand side has no letters left. When you've got no letters left, it's just simplifying. Your calculator can do that work. But as I forgot my calculator uh, when I left the room, I'm going to have to do this by hand. So let me do that. A half of 10 
is 5, 10 plus 20 is 30, and 5 times 30 is 150. So I got that the area of my trap is 150. 150 what? 150 square meters. But careful, that is the total area. I need to cut out this circle. I need to remove that piece because I'm not going to tile it. So let's find how big that piece is first. Let's find the area of the circle. Again, I'm going to refer, refer to my formula sheet. Area of a cir circle formula is I, A is equal to pi r squared. So my A is the area of the thing I'm looking for. A good approximation for pi, especially in word problems, is 3.14. And that is on your formula sheet. If you don't know pi, um, they do tell you pi is approximately 3.14. And the radius of my circle, R stands for radius. Now, careful. They didn't actually give me the radius of my circle. They gave me the diameter. They said that my jacuzzi is 5... Uh, meters in diameter. Here's five meters in diameter. Diameter goes through the center of a circle from edge to edge, but I need the radius. The radius starts at the center. Let's grab a different color so you can see it. Radius starts at the center and goes to the edge. And so if you can see that, there's two radius in a diameter, two radii in a diameter, or another way of thinking of it is the radius is half the diameter. So this radius piece is going to be half of the 5. It's going to be 5 divided by 2, or 2.5. So I'm going to plug in 2.5 for my radius, and then I'm going to square that. And now I'm really regretting that I forgot my calculator because I hate multiplying decimals without a calculator. I'm going to follow the order of operations and do the exponent first. 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25. And that's the only one I have memorized. So now I have to come over here to do my side work. And I really, I'm telling you, I'm regretting my life decisions. Because multiplying three-digit decimals together is no fun. Okay, 6.25 times 3.14. First, I'll pass out my 4. 20, 8, 9, 10, 24, 25. Now I'll pass out my 1. I'm going to, it's not, it's um, not in the first place. Um, I, I'm ignoring decimals when I multiply. I'll deal with the decimals at the end. So I'm imagining like that 1 is in the tens place. So I'm going to put a 0 right there. And then I'm going to pass it out, 5. Two, six. I'm going to put two zeros for the three because it's like the three is in the hundreds place. And three times five is 15. Six, seven, 18. And if I make a mistake here, you guys ought to forgive me because it's actually really challenging to multiply three digit numbers together because there's so many chances for error. Okay, so two decimal places in the first number, two decimal places in the second number, so there'll be a total of four decimal places in my answer. One, two, three, four. So I get that the area of that jacuzzi is about 19.625 square meters. Now what did we say we were going to do? We said that we could find the area of the trap, then find the area of the circle, and subtract them to find the total covered area. So let's get that area of uh, the trap, which was 150 square meters. Let's subtract out that area of the uh, circle that's not getting covered. And again, I regret my life decisions to not get a calculator because I don't like subtracting by hand either. Uh, but I make sure that my place values always line up in subtraction. So I had my ones lining up with my ones, my tens with my tens. And then I added some zeros onto 150 so that I would have numbers in the tenths, hundredths, and thousand places. Great. I'm going to go to the first non-zero number and borrow one, which will turn the next one up to a ten. Borrow one, which turns up the next one to a ten. And I keep the process going until I have enough in my final column to start my subtraction. So 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 2 is 7, 9 minus 6 is 3, 9 minus 9 is 0, 4 minus 1 is 3, and I get 130.375 square meters. Now, in word problems, you should go looking for rounding directions. They often slip some in there, so let's take a look. How many square meters of patio will need to be tiled, not counting the space for the jacuzzi? Okay, no rounding directions. So I'm going to assume, since this is not a multiple choice, that the answer they want is the one where I use 3.14, since that's the decimal approximation on the GED formula sheet that they ask us to use. So final answer, 
130.375 square meters. Told you this was a challenging problem. And yeah, this is as challenging as um, geometry really does get on the GED. If you got one of these, it'd probably be one of the most complex problems on your test. You might wait till the end to look at this one. Give yourself time to think about it and solve it. I'm a math teacher and it's taken me 10 minutes. Uh, so lucky you though, you wouldn't forget your calculator. You'd have it on screen. <laughs> Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.